As someone who's always trying to help you pick winners, I'm constantly searching for outliers, for companies that are performing very differently from the other players in their industry with stocks that behave nothing like the other names in their cohort. You find a positive outlier, gains can be enormous. Let me give you an example. Take the cybersecurity business. Lately, the growth of traditional network security plays has varied from lackluster to whole hum and pitiful. Cisco's security software business is chugging along in low single digits, and I like Cisco. Checkpoint's growing in the mid-single digits. Juniper security division actually declined by 2% in its latest quarter. And then you have Palo Alto Networks, the outlier, a next generation network security company with perhaps the best technology in the business. Not only does Palo Alto have terrific technology, but their platform also saves clients money by simplifying the security infrastructure and eliminating the need to buy multiple standalone products from various different vendors. When Palo Alto reported last Wednesday, no surprise to me, the company blew away the numbers, earning 11 cents a share, one cent beat on higher than expected revenues that rose 49% year over year. Spectacular growth. Makes me think the company's taking share from the competition. At the same time, we learned that Palo Alto reached a settlement with their litigation with Juniper Networks, forking over $175 million, much less than we'd expect, and that removes a big overhang, although there is stock involved in that. It, but it's not just Palo Alto, the company that's an outlier. Stock's serious outlier, too. At a time when high multiple tech stocks are still having trouble getting traction, Palo Alto's been rebounding like crazy. During the spring sell-off from the high flyers, the stock dropped from $80 down to $58. But in just the last few weeks, it's already bounced back to $74 and changed. That's right. Palo Alto's only a few points off its all-time high, and it's rallied 50% since we last spoke to the CEO a little over six months ago and pounded the table for you to buy. And even though Palo Alto is far from cheap here, I think it deserves to go higher. Don't take it from me. Let's get a closer look with Mark McLaughlin, who I am so thrilled is here. Chairman, President, and CEO of Palo Alto Networks. Learn more about his company, his prospects. Mr. McLaughlin, welcome back to Mad Money. Hi, Jim. Thanks for having me. It's always great to be here. Sir, you must be so relieved that this thing that I've had to talk to you about every single time, this Juniper lawsuit, is now behind you. And I bet some potential customers are relieved, too. Well, it's, it's really good to have it behind us. It's definitely a distraction. Uh, investors cared a lot about it for the last uh, few years, which I understand. It uh, really didn't impact the business that, in any way that I can tell, but uh, it's really good to have the distraction behind us so we can just stay focused on what we do best, which is innovating and serving customers. Do I have to worry as a shareholder, potential shareholder of Palo Alto, that Juniper registers the shares that they got and just blows them right out to kingdom come? It's, of course, a possibility that shares will be registered and uh, they'll have a, a small position in the company as a result of the uh, suit. Yeah, the calculus I went through on that was that the, the impact of having the, share, the lawsuit behind us from a dilution perspective would pay for itself over time. And, you know, at least in the last few days, that appears to be the case. And I know there's enough volume in the stock that it certainly can handle, even if they just put it out there in a the secondary. Not an issue, right? I don't think so. Yeah, it's very minimal. All right. On your conference call, I thought you buried the lead here. You had to go all the way down to page 18 on the Thomson Reuters. You say, just as a general matter, you should assume that regardless of where we are on the world, Almost 100% of our sales are displacement sales. In other words, you're going in and taking out an inferior product. Is that what is happening with, with, your, with the vast majority of your sales? That, that is the vast majority of our sales. And you can just see that from the numbers. In the industry, the CAGR, the compounded annual growth rate of our industry, is about 5 to 6% uh, based on some third-party data. Uh, you just noted we grew 49% year over year in the last quarter. Uh, so when you compare those two numbers, uh, you, you have to assume that we're rapidly taking market share from all comers. And we know our own uh, win rates as well against all the competition. So we know that's actually happening. But almost all the sales we do are displacements are very competitive. People are testing the technology and voting with their wallet. All right, I think people have to understand why. You've got a granularity of a solution, which just includes the Siberia that you just bought, which isn't just, hey, once they're in, you stop them. It's about prevention, too. Why is your model, why is your product so much different and better than the other guy's mousetrap? Because uh, pretty much everybody in the industry for a very long time has been focused just on detection capabilities. And it's one thing to tell a customer, I can detect, you know, what happened after the fact. Uh, you, you need to go fix that, right? Uh, it's a different thing to be able to tell the customer, in addition to do fantastic detection, we're designing prevention technology, so it's going to greatly reduce the amount of bad stuff that's going to happen to you in the first place. 
That's been our philosophy from the beginning, and the platform's architected that way with protection and prevention at its core, and that's a huge differentiator for us in the market. We had a terrific guy on last night, Ed Heffern, and he runs Alliance Data Systems. I'm sure you've bumped up against them. And one of the things he told, uh, told us, and he's made this point over and over again, look, you know, you got to be open. The customers want you to be open. They want it to be open, except for when they're hacked, and then they want it to be closed. How do you reconcile this desire to have hundreds of millions of people have credit cards for ease with the idea that once they find out they're hacked, they don't ever want to go back to the store again. Well, that's that's the problem, right? So that's why you want prevention in the first place, because uh, if your business relies on getting personal or private information like credit card information, you're going to put that in the data center, and that's exactly where the, the bad guys want to go. So uh, your business, as you can see from a lot of things that have happened in the industry lately, uh, really relies on the reputational ability to, to secure that data. So you have to have a prevention approach in order to do that, not just the detection approach, which says, you know, we got hacked and we, now we know why because we went and studied it for a while. Uh, that, that's not a good business practice. Is it fair to go into customers and say, listen, you know what, we could have prevented what happened to eBay. We could have prevented what went on in Target. Or is that not the kind of thing you can do because you just don't know if you could have nailed it? The reality is, is that nobody's going to prevent everything, and we never tell customers that we've got a prevention technology that's going to protect you against everything. That would, that just wouldn't be true. Uh, so what we do tell customers is you build what you start to design with. So if you build with a detection philosophy, you will build detection types of, uh, of technology. If you start with a prevention uh, philosophy like we did, you'll build prevention, and it'll get better and better and better over time. And I think that's something we've demonstrated in the market for years now. And last question, the Israeli acquisition, what does that bring uh, because I have to believe that they are constantly been innovators in security, so they may have something proprietary here for you. Yeah, just as an aside, Israel, cybersecurity development innovation is just off the charts over there. Lots of smart people doing some great stuff. The company we found, Cyvera, is the only company in the industry that's paying attention to the exploit techniques for prevention at the endpoint. So what we've done with uh, Cyvera is to close the loop between the network, the cloud, and the endpoint to provide total protection across the enterprise network. Well, you guys have done a fabulous job. I know a lot of people said, Kim, why are you sticking your neck out for Palo Alto? I said, sometimes you get a superior management, you get a superior, get a superior product, but you have a lawsuit overhang that will be solved. You did all of those. Mark McLaughlin, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Jim. Guys, this stock's going higher. It's Mark McLaughlin, Chairman, President, and CEO of Al Al Palo Alto Networks. Cybersecurity is probably the number one problem for the cloud. They've got the number one solution. Stay with Kramer.